coffee a lot. Some would say I'm addicted to it. I would say, shut up. But I gotta have my oat milk latte every day, which is a problem when I'm away from home. My nice, fancy espresso machine. I can't make one for myself. I gotta rely on other people to do it. Ew. I spent almost two weeks in Japan. I went from Tokyo all around there to Kyoto and Osaka and then back to Tokyo. So throughout the whole trip, I mapped out some great coffee spots. Luckily, Japan has some incredible coffee spots. It's hard to quantify exactly what makes a good coffee shop, but you know it when you see it, and I know that you know what I'm talking about. Some people call it third wave coffee shops. I mean, just look it up. It, it's still hard to explain, but there's a few unwritten rules about how you would quantify something like that. I guess the first one is what type of machine are they using? Are they using something with any buttons at all? Probably not a good place. Does it have a screen on it? Probably not so good. Of course, there's exceptions to that rule. They have like a decent machine. That's a brand name, but I'm not just calling it a decent machine. That's got a big iPad on it. That one's pretty good. I think the Slayer has some buttons on it, but you, 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 again, you'll know it when you see it. You go to a Starbucks, they hit a button and it just pours the shot. That's not good coffee. Another unwritten rule is do they have food? Do they have a lot of food on the menu? And if that's true, it's probably not a good coffee shop. They probably have good food. The coffee's gonna suffer for it. There's exceptions to that, of course, too. And we actually show that in this video. You can also just kind of catch the general vibe. Does it look like a, a, a rich person's apartment? Then that's probably a great coffee shop. I'm a little spoiled spending the beginning of my espresso journey in Brooklyn. Every four feet in Brooklyn, there's just an amazing coffee shop. There's so many over there and they're all great. I'm spoiled because when I go to other cities, it's hard for me to find a place that's similar to what I'm used to that can make me a good cup, a nice oat milk latte for the love of God. Luckily, Japan has sort of adopted this Brooklyn third wave coffee movement and in some cases iterated on it and made it a little better. I knew that when we went to Japan, we would spend each day in a different area and I didn't wanna really make everybody go too far out of the way. So what I did in preparation for the trip was I accumulated a bunch of spots that I found either on like TikTok or just looking around on the map or whatever. And I made little pins on Google Maps, little green flags. So if we're in an area, I could just pull up my Google map and see what we're closest to. There were a couple of kind of famous spots that I just had to see. A couple I'm disappointed I wasn't able to get to, but a lot of my favorite coffees on this trip were ones that I just found by searching what was near me. And I can confidently say that every single coffee that I had was great with the exception of one or maybe two, but you'll understand why. I guess the first coffee that I had, which I didn't post on my Twitter, was just at the like lounge in the hotel. That was just an abomination. Just a welcome, welcome to Japan coffee. Delightful. I kept a log of all of the coffees that I had on my Twitter, so I'm using that to, to recount all of the ones that I had. The first real one that I had was the first day when we got there. We got to Japan at about four in the morning. So we had the whole day. So at about nine in the morning, we went to Swamp Coffee in Shinjuku. There's a lot of different variables that make a great cup of coffee. And one of those variables is the circumstances you're having that coffee in. And after a long 16 hour flight, going to a coffee shop that's just a short walk away, that motherfucker is hitting so good. <laughs> this beautifully set the stage for all of the coffee shops to come. A lot of them have record players playing like jazz music. Swamp was a very tiny shop, unassuming in this little corner of Shinjuku. There were maybe six to eight stools in there, but you cannot fit eight people in there at all. There were four of us and we packed out the place. This is another theme throughout this. I noticed that whenever we would roll in somewhere, a lot of the locals would run out and I would feel really bad about that. And a lot of these coffee shops are just one guy working there and that's it. So it would probably take a long time to get a couple of coffee orders. If I were you, I would go 
by yourself or with a limited group. But he had a beautiful setup there and every single person that got something said it was great. I got my regular hot oat milk latte and it was amazing. Some of the people I was with got iced mochas and those were very interesting. I put this number one on my list for a long time, but we got like 11 or 12 more coffees to have. So number two was the following day. It was Kielo coffee in Akihabara. I know we're really early in the trip already, but this was another one of my favorite coffees in the whole trip. This one was the most different tasting. This was the only coffee place that made me wanna buy the beans from the store. I didn't get a chance to go back. I just thought about it over the whole trip. I, of course, had limited space in my luggage because I bought a lot of video game crap, but I kind of regret not getting beans from that place. Once again, I got an oat milk latte. This place was a little bigger. There was still only one or I think two people working behind there, and they also had a very small setup, but there was a lot more seating room. When we walked in, there was six of us, and there was already about six French dudes eating there. They were having little little snacks. It wasn't like real food. Otherwise, that would have been a shitty coffee place. That's another coffee that hit just right because it was bright and early in the morning starting our day off game hunting in Akihabara, but it was extremely hot out and I got a hot oat milk latte. You gotta get it hot, at least I do. It just hits so much better than, than, a, than an iced one. I sound like a drug addict, don't I? I don't think it's the milk. I think it's actually the beef tea. It's like a lot of, there's like a nice sweetness going on. I got to try it. Made. No, it's okay. It's okay. I, I can't have caffeine. Okay, just, at least not today. Okay. <laughs> Number three was the day after. Usually I like having two coffees in a day, but I kind of limited myself on this trip. And I'm not happy about that. I would have liked to have doubled up and experienced more of Japan. There was just so much to do while we were there. So number three was Silo Coffee in Nakano. Nakano is a beautiful area of Tokyo that has this sort of market area. And inside that market is a flea market that has a lot of old used manga, anime art, video games, toys. It was incredible. But before spending the day hunting for nerd shit over there, I, I, had, I had to have my cup. This was another very tiny shop with one guy working there. He had one little tiny Lamar Zoko with one porta filter on it and a nice big expensive grinder. Another place that could only fit maybe two people in there. And the guy there, probably the owner if I had to guess, was awesome. He was extremely chatty. I was speaking to him in my broken Japanese. He was speaking to me in his broken English. That was another awesome moment of the trip. My Japanese is very bad. I can basically just order an oat milk latte and like, that's it. If there's any issues, I just, I just can't respond. But I was very proud of myself. I was confidently ordering coffees the whole time. But then when I got home, I was looking up like some Japanese oat milk because I really enjoyed the coffee that I had there and their oat milk's different. Let me try to see if I can get some over here. And I realized I was pronouncing oat milk wrong the whole time. How did, how did they understand me even? I was saying Oto, it's Otsu. That's why Kielo Coffee wrote Oats Latte. That's why they write Oats Latte. Anyway, I loved the experience at Silo. They ran out of oat milk. They only had regular and soy. I should have gotten regular. I got soy. Soy milk kind of sucks. I fucked that one up. I, I wish I could go back and give it another shot. The espresso tasted really good, I could tell, but I ruined it. The fourth coffee we had was the following day again. This was Glitch Coffee in Ginza. We found this place going to a different coffee shop. I think it was called Bogan Coffee. This was after spending the day at the Tsukiji Market, which had tons of great food. It's a fish market, so they had a lot of great little sushi bowls and, and, and individual sushi dishes that you can just get over the counter, a bunch of snacks, some Wagyu on a stick. It, that was one of the highlights of the trip. But then I, of course we had to get our coffee somehow. So we went to this famous Bogan place, so famous that the line was crazy and I'm not about to do that. Luckily on the way to that coffee shop, we passed an empty coffee shop called Glitch Coffee that looked 
fancy as all hell. People working there were wearing suits. So we rolled in there and this was the fanciest of the whole trip. They really prided themselves on their roasts. They had like 20 different roasts and they were trying to like gauge our tastes and what would best suit us. Everyone I was with got a cold brew or iced coffee. I, I think it was cold brew. Couldn't be cold brew. It had to be iced coffee because I think they brewed it right there live. It took a long time to get everybody's coffee. I got, of course, a hot oat milk latte. And this was extremely delicious. I think you go to this place for the experience. You go to this place if you really love coffee and really care about the flavor profile of it. I think this is in a different league. This coffee was very expensive. We went with six people and I think everybody's coffee together was around $100. It was, it was a lot. That's like one venti at Starbucks. <laughs> and personally, this type of coffee shop is a different vibe completely. I wouldn't call this a third wave place. This is something else entirely. Personally, I want a cup that's a little more rough around the edges. I want to be able to taste the imperfections. So this was really cool, really good, a very good experience, but not the thing that we're looking for when we're walking around hunting for good coffees. The fifth one was Kita Sando Coffee Lab in Shibuya. Now, this was another random one we just kind of stumbled upon. It was raining really hard, so we kind of ducked into here. It was later in the afternoon, the same day we went to Glitch Coffee. So it was kind of on a whim without a plan. This is another very small place. I think they had two seats in the front. They had a huge coffee counter though. They had a lot of equipment behind the counter, but again, a very small espresso machine. We learned very quickly that this place's whole gimmick was charcoal. They put charcoal in the coffee for some reason, and it gives it this black look. There's no reason to put charcoal in coffee. So it looks really cool and it hit just fine as a little afternoon snack, but this is pretty low on the list. Uh, it's still a great coffee, but not what we're looking for. Number six was my most anticipated and the one that I definitely had to go to, the one that I went out of my way to go to and I made everybody on the trip come with me. This was Bear Pond Espresso in Shido Kitazawa which is an awesome area in Tokyo that has a lot of thrift stores and they're all thrift stores that have American goods. So a lot of Harley Davidson shirts, a lot of old US band shirts, a lot of Home Depot jackets. That's bizarre. And we got there around 10 a.m. The whole city doesn't open until 11. So it was a ghost town and then once it hit 11, bam, everyone's there and everyone's shopping. We waited outside Bear Pond for them to open, and they did. They didn't seem too happy about six foreigners walking right in as they open, but I mean, what are you gonna do? I want my coffee. They did not have oat milk. I think that they pride themselves on curating their flavor profile to, to their tastes, and they say, no, you can't have oat milk. So future Bob will uh, deal with the consequences of that one but it was very good. This is a legendary place. I know about it from YouTube. There's like a little mini doc about the guy who went over there and opened it. He is from Japan, moved to New York, either Brooklyn or Manhattan, I forget, and worked for a couple of different coffee shops. And then I think it was the grumpy coffee people or somebody told him, you gotta move back to Tokyo and bring the New York coffee culture back with you. And he did and it checks all of the boxes. It was delicious espresso. Come on, man, everybody's, everybody's on oat milk now. Also in Chido Kitazawa, they have a Brooklyn Roasting Company. I didn't drink from here, I should have. I think it was too close to the previous coffee that I already had. I love Brooklyn Roasting Company. It's one of my favorite coffees in New York. And somewhere in 2019, they went bankrupt and closed most of their stores in New York. So they have just as many stores in Japan as they do in America, I think. But anyway, this store is much bigger than the Brooklyn Roasting Companies in New York, in Brooklyn. And I've been to both Brooklyn Roasting Companies in Japan and both times I didn't get any coffee. So I'm regretting that now. I would have liked to have compared the two. Coffee number six was on the way back from Shido Kitazawa. This was one of Wood's picks. 
this, I wasn't expecting to actually get coffee here. I actually didn't, I just had a sip of his. And you know what? It was very delicious. This was Rain on the Roof in Sangen Jaya. This is apparently a curry and coffee place that is in what inspired uh, the place in Persona 5. I never played that game, so I don't know. There's a little bit of debate online whether it was this place or a different place. Some people say it's a mix between the two, but this is in the area that seems clearly what inspired Persona 5. I got a little curry dish that, you know what, was delicious. The coffee wasn't expecting to be any good because they have food, but it was actually very good. I kind of wish I got a coffee from this place. Coffee number eight was another desperate situation. We had taken the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Kyoto. Then once we got to Kyoto, our room wasn't ready. So we filmed a whole podcast in their library. This hotel is where the original Nintendo headquarters was from the 1800s. That was an incredible experience in itself. And you wanna hear more about that, you can watch the Nintendo podcast where we talk all about it and we show some of the rooms and, and the, the place where we, the library where we filmed the podcast in. But we shot the podcast, that takes about an hour. And then uh, where's the food, where's the coffee? It's almost five o'clock, come on. Luckily, Kyoto is full of amazing coffee places. Very similar to what it's like in Williamsburg. You walk every two feet and there's just an awesome coffee shop. We found one just right next to the hotel. It was called Sot Coffee Roasters. Another situation where I felt bad, six of us rolling in right when they're closing. That kind of sucked. But another great place. This was a little bigger than some of the other ones. They had some floor seating in the back. They had an upstairs area that I didn't get to check out and they had a very tiny, nice espresso set up and I got myself an oat milk latte there and it was also delicious. This saved my life that day. I don't know if I would have made it through the whole day without that. But that wasn't my favorite coffee in Kyoto. My favorite was coffee number nine, which was Walden Woods in Kyoto. This was such an awesome looking place. I liked this so much, I bought a t-shirt from them. It also helped that their logo was, was a wolf. It's like, woods, woods themed with a wolf, uh, whatever. They had a huge coffee setup. They had a huge roaster in there. It was also extremely unique looking because Kyoto is a bit more of a traditional town and they have a lot of small old-ish apartments that are like all like kind of slammed together. And then you have this really big, very modern open concept, just looks like a slab of modernism in this traditional town. It was very interesting to see. And of course the coffee was delicious and everybody that worked there was extremely nice. This might've been my favorite spot of the whole trip. My only regret is not going to more coffee places in Kyoto. Another interesting fact about coffee in Kyoto is that a lot of these coffee shops open at really bizarre times. Nine o'clock seemed to be the earliest that any of these coffee places open. We found some that open at 11. I found one that opened at two in the afternoon. And they're also closed on weird days. Some of them are closed on like Mondays and Wednesdays. They, they like alternate. They like, they, they like don't want to step on each other's toes. It's very weird. Coffee number 10 was Murmur in Kyoto, which was also a very short walk from the hotel. This seemed to be a very popular spot. It was on sort of this little tiny river that ran through Kyoto. This was a relatively tiny place. Their specialty seems to be fun little toasts. And by little, I mean, they were huge. They were very big toasts. I forgot which ones we got. We got a cheese one, we got a honey one, and then we got another one. I think it was like a pizza toast, whatever. They were delicious. The coffee, I think they roasted there. They had a little tiny roaster back there, but they didn't have an espresso machine. So they just did a regular old coffee. That's not gonna hit the same for Bob over here. But you know what it did? It was very delicious. They did have oat milk, so I had that. Usually if it's not an oat milk latte, I'm gonna have a fit my body. It needs a very specific thing every day, but this worked, it, it was fine. It was, it was good, I, li I liked it a lot. I just liked the, the shop in general. It, it, was, it was nice sitting on a little river in Kyoto, eating my toast and drinking my coffee. This was right before we went to uh, Universal Studios in Osaka to go to Nintendo World. So I needed to 
gear up for that. I needed some caffeine in my body. They did take an extremely long time to get us our, our food and our coffee. There was a lot of people in there and there were only two people working there. So I don't blame them. Coffee number 11 was at Toad's Cafe because I've already gotten this deep in this video and I felt obligated to get a coffee every step I could. This was, without a doubt, the worst coffee that I had the whole trip. I wasn't expecting any better from Toad, but you could have surprised me. The food at Toad's Cafe was actually surprisingly good. I'm not expecting food from a theme park to be any good. And the lines at these places are usually insane, but we only waited 30 minutes from when we got on the line to when we started eating our food. And I waited longer than that at Chili's. We went a little crazy because we wanted to try a lot of stuff. So we got three meals and two desserts. I'm gonna spare you because I talk a lot more about this in depth on the next Nintendo podcast. It's probably out by now. So you get two whole podcasts about my trip in Japan, but it was great. And the desserts were the best part. The coffee was just instant coffee, garbage. It was what you would expect. Bottom of the list, zero out of 10. Toad, you gotta have somebody come to your cafe and tell you how to fucking work your shit. Coffee number 12 was Walden Woods again. This was the only place I went to more than once, just out of a little bit of desperation. I think we were leaving Kyoto that day and I knew they were open. There wasn't a lot of stuff open that early and I, I needed my fix and I knew it was very good. So this time around, they did a weird thing that I've never seen before. They put the espresso in the milk and then steamed all of that together. They didn't do it the, the last time I went. They did it that time. It tasted just as delicious. It just didn't have any art on it because they mixed it all together. Coffee number 13 was going to be Coffee Elementary School, which is one that I really wanted to go to. It's another famous spot that I think was made famous, at least here in the States, by BuzzFeed. They tried a couple of coffees across Japan and that one looked really good. This was back in Tokyo at Sumida City, but they were closed and I think they're indefinitely closed. That was very disappointing because that was about 40 minutes out of the way for us. And this was the last day on the whole trip. So we had to improvise a little bit and we went to Tokyo Skytree because it was relatively close and I just wanted to find a good place to hang out in Tokyo. And there are two great coffee shops there. The one we decided to settle on is Soul's Coffee in Tokyo Skytree. It was delicious. They had a nice big espresso set up, but again, just one person walking there. Got an oat milk latte. It was delicious, it hit the spot. Again, a lot of the best stuff I found on this trip was just on a whim looking around. But the last coffee that I had was a latte at the lounge at the airport. And that was also terrible. So my favorite coffee is hard to rank here. It's probably a toss up between the first two, Swamp and Kielo coffee. Kielo had the most interesting flavor, but Swamp was just a great experience because I had just gotten off the plane and I needed something and it hit so good. And I just liked the general vibe of the place. And Walden Woods was also probably my favorite place the way that it looked and felt in the middle of Kyoto. So if you're going to Japan specifically for coffee places, I would highly recommend going to Kyoto because they had a lot. They had the largest selection of coffee in such a tight area. Also, Shido Kitazawa had a lot of coffee in a small area. I think next time I go to Tokyo, I might want to stay near there so I can try a bunch of different places because I only got to try Bear Pond there. But I'd also say if you're planning your trip, don't listen to me, go there and write call he in Google Maps and experience places for yourself, places that you would have never tried if you just tried to stick to your book, you know? There's a lot of other places that I would have loved to have gone to, but just because of time constraints and where I was it, it, in the trip, it just wasn't gonna happen. And I am disappointed by that. But that just means I gotta go again. So if there's any that I missed that you liked when you went to Japan, or if you're there right now, Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter and any and all that other social media garbage. Thanks for watching this whole video wacky and wild about me trying different coffees all over the place. When I got home from the trip, I, I turned this thing on to clean it and uh, it broke. This thing's broken. That's why there's a second espresso machine back there. I gotta send this back. Thank you very much. Have a good week.